says, uh, circle the letter of the best answer, which is an ionic. How can I tell that it's an ionic? The compound looks like this. Metal, non-metal. That's a lie. There is one exception, and I'm going to tell you the odds are very good that I'll also give you that one exception on your test tomorrow. What's the one positive polyatomic ion? NH4 acts like a metal, even though nitrogen isn't a metal. So if I see something beginning with NH4, it's also ionic. Otherwise, at this young stage in your science career, you'll assume it's covalent. So no, 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 yes. And you'll also notice, Grace, I used my typical process of elimination on the multiple choice section. It's a great way to write multiple choice. Which of the following is a compound? Which of the following is a compound? Mr. Duick, you never really, well, a compound is going to have, what? Yeah. Um, more, than one more than one element. That is not a compound. That's a diatomic molecule. It's not a compound because it doesn't have more than one element. It does have more than one, two oxygens, but only oxygen. Um, now, you could make an argument that these are ions, and they are, but ions, those are polyatomic ions, and they are compounds. So I think here the answer is one, two, and three only. Because the definition of a compound doesn't say that it has to be neutral. This one happens to be neutral. Consider the following formula, Na2, CO3. What's the ratio of positive to negative ions? Say what? Well, that's a polyatomic ion. Uh, what is CO3 called? What is CO3 called? Uh, carbonate, carbonide, carbonite, carbonate, not bicarbonate, carbonate. Okay, so you would call this sodium carbonate. How many sodiums are there? How many carbonates are there? Not three. What, Danielle? This is a tricky question, but actually the ratio of positive to negative ions, there's two positive ions, each one plus one, and one negative ion, and I'll bet you carbonate is a two negative, is that right? Which is why I need two pluses to go with one, is that right? Uh-huh. A lot of kids look at that and they go, oh, two to three, because they see a two, they see a three. Ah, but this is a polyatomic ion. That's why, although I never write the brackets, this time I did put in the brackets so that I could see that there is a one there. What's the formula for aluminum hydroxide? Aluminum is Al, it's three plus. Hydroxide is OH, it's negative one. When I crisscross, it's gonna be uh, Al1, OH, three of them, but then I would say, I'm not going to bother writing the one, uh, oh, D, D. Do you need brackets on it? Yep. Otherwise, what you're saying is there's three hydrogens, but not three oxygens. So B is wrong. I like that question. I like, in other words, there's going to be some polyatomic crisscrossing tomorrow. If there's more than one when you crisscross, put the polyatomic in brackets with the number outside the brackets. Which of these correctly describes chiku, which I think is acetate? Is it an ion? That there tells me it's an ion. It's got a charge. So whenever, on, uh, next year when you guys write your Science 10 Provincial, they love these chart questions. Whenever they give me these chart questions, I put little check marks next to the answers that are right. Is it multivalent? Does it have more than one charge? Nope. And right now, I would cross out C, and I would cross out A. As soon as I know that something is wrong, I go cross out anything that has it in it. Because, Cole, even if I can't get the rest, I've turned it from guessing from four to guessing to two. Really, I've turned it into a true-false question. That's, that's good. Uh, keep going. Is it polyatomic? Yep. Is it... 
a compound. So, this, because I, I don't see the option of 1, 3, and 4 anywhere, and I know 1 is right. I guess it's this, which means I have to go back and revise my answer back here. This is how you can figure out answers on tests, because I said, which of the following is a compound? Apparently, polyatomic ions aren't compounds. Apparently, D is wrong. Apparently, what I wanted is A. Ooh. You mean, Mr. Duick, if you're paying attention, you can figure out answers on a test from other answers on a test? Yep. Let's keep going. What is the name of the metal ion in uh, Fe2S3? Fe, iron. Is iron multivalent? Yeah. So it's going to have a Roman numeral. And sulfide's not the metal. Hey, I've just turned it into a true-false question. Is it iron 2 or is it iron 3? I said the way that we work this is we reverse crisscross. What do I mean by that? Well, there must have been two sulfurs. What's each sulfur's charge? Two negative? So I must have had a total of negative 4, which means I have to have a total of positive 4. How many irons are there? Sorry, let me try this again, Mr. Duick. How many sulfurs were there here? Sorry, let me try that again. How many sulfurs were there? Three. Three. Each one is worth what? Two negative. So I have each sulfur is worth two negative. I needed three of them. How many negatives do I have in that compound grand total? Negative six, Mr. Duick. How many positives have I better have? Positive six. How many irons do I have in this compound? Which must work out to positive six. What must each iron be worth then? Three. This must be iron three sulfide. These are tough. Yep. Turn the page, or next page over. What's the name of Na2CO3? Didn't we already say it so wasn't sodium carbonate? Sodium, no, not multivalent, no Roman numeral. And then CO3 is a polyatomic, read the name from the back. Is there another name for, uh, you know what, I got my sheet here, let's look. Is it always called carbonate? CO3. Where is CO3? Am I just blind? Oh, oh, right there, near the top. Yeah, it's the hydrogen ones that are called hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate, hydrogen sulfate or bisulfate. Which one's right? They're both right. I usually write the shortest name because I'm lazy. What's the name of PBS2? P uh, lead, uh, multivalent? Okay. How many S's did I need? Two of them. What's each S worth? Negative what? Negative two. Is, is sulfur negative two as an ion? So I have a total of negative four. That must mean I better have a total of positive four. Uh, how many leads do I have here? One. So what's it have to be worth? Positive four. This is going to be lead four sulfide. You see how you reverse engineer that? I, I, I haven't found a short way to get there in my head. I figure out what the total negative must be, make it positive, and then figure out how many of the, each there were. Oh, how many atoms? Uh, let's see. NH4. Well, there's 5 right there times the 3. That makes 15 plus 1 phosphorus plus 4 oxygens. 20? Now we're going to be talking about physical and chemical changes. I haven't reviewed that much, but there are going to be some questions about that. When is it a chemical change if something new is produced? You're going to need, I'm definitely going to ask you a question about exothermic and endothermic. And as Hannah has so astutely pointed out, exo, exit, heat is exiting, endo, 
Heat is entering. I can't believe I never thought of that. Thank you. You've changed my teaching for the better. Flunk my course, and next year the course will be that much better because of Hannah. Um, so I will ask you the difference. So let's see. An explosive device is used to blast rock. Which set of terms describes the explosive device? First of all, an explosion. Is that a physical or a chemical change? It's chemical. Okay, explosions are chemical. So, no, no. Um, explosions, do they suck in heat or do they give off heat? You've seen enough movies, so it's exothermic. Matching, okay. Well, I'm going to kind of do the... Uh, do the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's gonna be two left over. Hmm. You know what? I knew that uh, 12 was H. I know that the reactants are what you're starting with. Uh, what do you call what you get on the other side of a chemical reaction? It begins with letter P? Product. Okay, products. Those might be good vocabulary words. Uh, ionic lattice refers to a metal and a non-metal chemically bonded. Well, that's an ionic, you know what? That's an ionic bond, ionic compound. You know what? I think A is, four, I think 14 is A. You know, I think an ionic lattice is a highly ordered array or lattice or crystal of ions. I think that's what they're getting at there. I may come back to that, but I think that's what I want. Uh, let's see. A group of atoms contain, uh, blah, 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 may form a pos, oh, you know what? Multivalent may form a positive ion in more than one way. So I got polyatomic ion and molecule. A polyatomic ion is an ion, oh, there it is, D. It's an ion made of several atoms. They're joined by covalent bonds, but they're an ion because after they join, there's still some extra electrons or extra protons. They have a charge. Molecule, is a molecule a group of atoms joined by covalent bonds or is it material that is made during a chemical reaction? I, I, I think a group of atoms joined by covalent bonds makes more sense to me. I don't think it's that. Because you know why? What's a material that is made during a chemical reaction? It's a word that begins with the letter P. Product. I think that's product. Short answer questions. A lot of you ask me, Mr. Duick, uh, oh, uh, 17. Well, first of all, the answer to B, how is that like an ion? I can answer that in one word. It has a one word, charge. That's what makes it an ion. How is it like a molecule? More than one element. Oh, and if you really want it to be fancy, you could say bonded covalently. But more than, you know, if you just said more than one element. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. Although I've just learned that I was wrong in saying that. I just learned that compounds don't have a charge. Now I know. Uh, write the formula, magnesium, okay, crisscross, magnesium, Mg, magnesium have a, has a charge of 2 plus, nitride, did they say nitride, nitrite, or nitrate? Nitride, so that's just going to be the straight nitrogen, which I think is uh, 3 minus. It's going to be Mg3N2, all or nothing. Nickel three fluoride. Nickel is nickel Ni. That would make sense. Hey, it is. Uh, oh, it's multivalent. Oh, wait a minute. No, they told me use the three. That's what that Roman numeral means. Fluoride is negative, so it's going to be Ni one. Am I going to bother writing the one? I say no. F three. Ammonium, NH four plus. Sulfate, did they say sulfide, sulfite, or sulfate? Sulfate, that's from the back here somewhere. Sulfate, SO4, two negative. 
So I guess when I crisscross, I'm going to end up with NH4 HANA in brackets, two of those. SO4, I guess one of those. So do I need to write the one? No. So do I need to put the brackets? No. NH4 in brackets, two, SO4. Write the name. Oh, these are tougher. S is, uh, SR is uh, strontium. Is it multivalent, please? No. Woohoo, it's not. So this is just going to be strontium phosphide. V is vanadium, I think. Yeah. Ooh, multi, ooh. I got to figure out whether this is vanadium five or four, or it could be a different one that they didn't bother putting on the periodic table because it was just obscure and it only happens rarely, but it could happen. How? Okay, here's the V, here's the O. How many O's were there? Five. Each one of those is worth negative two, right? For a total of negative 10. So I have to have positive 10. How many vanadiums do I have? Two. So if I want to get positive 10, what do they add to? Got to, each of them has to be a five. This must be vanadium V. Hey, VV, vanadium V. Uh, okay. ah, uh, come on, pen. Oxide. Pen stopped working. Let's try that again. Vanadium 5, vanadium V, oxide. All or nothing. <sighs> CS is cesium. Oh, not multivalent. So it's just going to be, how do I spell cesium? E? Cesium. Hey, what's CR207? Dichromate. Dichromate. In a chemical change, in a physical change, uh, if you want to take it one step further, you can say in a chemical change, chemical bonds are broken, like in an explosion, or like in baking, cooking, uh, burning. A uh, flare would be a chemical change. Uh, physical changes, if you rip something. Uh, a smoothie is a physical change. You're just blending it up, but you're not changing any of the chemical, ch you're not forming new bonds. Yes? I, can you say it louder, please? That's an example of a physical change. So freezing, boiling, evaporating, uh, all those in that triangle, those are all physical changes. So if something boils or melts, those are all physical, those are examples. Folks, I'm not going to collect this quiz because there's a few questions I wasn't wild about how they were phrased, but it was a good review quiz of everything. It's kind of like your little mini kind of study guide thing, kind of thing. Okay? <laughs> Pause.